Indy Autonomous Challenge is a global competition that focuses on advancing autonomous vehicle technology and innovation through high-speed racing. This challenge involves university-affiliated teams from around the world who are tasked with programming fully autonomous race cars to compete in various events at renowned racetracks. The IAC provides a unique platform for students to engage in science, technology, engineering, and math through practical, hands-on experience in autonomous vehicle development. Teams from numerous universities representing various countries participate in this challenge, programming autonomous vehicles like the Dolar AV21 and the more advanced AV24 race cars. These vehicles are equipped with sophisticated technology, including advanced sensors, networking, and compute architecture, allowing for highly precise and autonomous control at high speeds. The competition has taken place in several iconic locations, including the Indianapolis Motor Speedway, the Las Vegas Motor Speedway, and as part of the Milano Monza Open Air Motor Show in Italy. The races often include various formats, like time trials, obstacle avoidance tests, and head-to-head -head races. Notably, the IAC has expanded to include more events and updated their technology stack to improve the performance and capabilities of the autonomous race cars. One of the key aspects of the IAC is its emphasis on advancing autonomous vehicle technology, potentially impacting the future development of commercial autonomous vehicles and advanced driver assistance systems. The challenge not only tests the limits of autonomous vehicle technology, but also encourages innovation and collaboration among the brightest minds in universities worldwide. I am live with Paul Mitchell, president of the Indy Autonomous Challenge at the Las Vegas Motor Speedway during CES. My name is Paul Mitchell. I'm president of Indy Autonomous Challenge. Yeah, I'm really excited to be here with you live at CES. How does this got started? Yeah, so Indy Autonomous Challenge did uh, over three years ago now as a prize competition to top research universities around the world to code AI drivers that could pilot fully autonomous race cars. We have 10 of these world's fastest autonomous race cars that we run at different events around the world, including each year we've run at CES, but we've also taken these cars to the Indianapolis Motor Speedway and even to the Monza F1 circuit. Who provided the cars? The cars are all identical. They're maintained and engineered in, with, with Indy Autonomous Challenge uh, team, but the components and the technology that go into the cars come from a bunch of different industry sponsors, companies like Luminar, Cisco, Continental, DSpace, Vectornav, Morelli, NI, and, and many others. How do you qualify to be part of it? Uh, universities that have been part of this have really been working at this for three years. From time to time, we do have new universities that get added to teams, but it's a process. You basically have to show that you could really add value to one of these very elite research university teams. What is your vision for this project? The goal is to prove out the capabilities of the components and the software for high-speed automation to eventually have this kind of technology help save lives on highways. What is one piece of advice that you have for the community? And it could be any community. I think the advice I would have is collaboration is how you do innovation. There's no way that we would have developed uh, the world's fastest race cars and been able to break every autonomous speed record if it wasn't for the collaboration among all these very smart, capable PhD students and universities. Thank, Thank you very you, much. Have Thank a great you. Day. This is part of Paul's speech at the event. Big thanks to the team from Unimore, from the, the AI Tech Racing, which is Berkeley, Carnegie Mellon, UC San Diego, and University of Hawaii and uh, for the Polytechnic of Milano MSU team. They've got this great new partnership with Michigan State University on top of their historic partnership with Alabama. So now they, they've got the, the Big Ten football and the SEC football covered. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Somewhere, somewhere, right? It's too early, right, for the Alabama jokes. <laughs> Anyway, so what you're going to see tonight is our vehicles head out onto the track, and if everything is cooperative, we'll put on a little light show for you, and showcase something autonomous vehicles are capable of that humans simply cannot do, or should not do at least. Thank you. I also interviewed the Auburn team lead by Stephanie Mayer live at the Las Vegas Motor Speedway during CES. I'm here with the Auburn team, Autonomous Tiger Racing. Yeah, so want to introduce yourself? Sure. I'm Stephanie Meyer, the team lead. Awesome. Uh, I'm Caleb Sh Schaefer, a software engineer. I'm Jackson Blanks, I'm the mechanical lead. I'm Gregory Mifflin, I'm the AI team lead. Awesome. I'm Bryce Carlins, I'm the hardware lead. Awesome, so how was making this? <laughs> it, it's been a lot of work. It's been how many years in the making now? Three I think we're, I think we're on the fourth year. Yeah. 
and these cars have evolved quite a bit even before the 24 refresh that we're actually standing by seeing them going around with lights on them in the dark right now as I'm speaking. It's like I said a lot of work so that the teams themselves mostly do the software mm -hmm. but we have done a lot of work getting to know the hardware on the car and taking care of the car mechanically mm -hmm. and we do really interface with the system very closely and give mm -hmm. feedback to the IAC but the IAC are the ones who are in charge of assembling the cars and making sure that we've got all the sensors that we need. How do you form the team? You guys have so many people. Oh, this, we're the smallest. <laughs> we're the yeah, smallest, yeah. smallest, smallest, smallest team smallest, here. Smallest team. <laughs> they they and, forced and, me on. And <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So the key to recruiting is you find somebody, you say, hey, what are you doing this semester? What's your project? And I found somebody who says, oh, I don't have anything I'm doing. I said, you're joining the autonomous racing team. Oh my you just, God. Don't you don't tell the them and they come. You, you give them something to do. Say, hey, I need you to collect this IQ file. <laughs> and then they do it. They, yeah. pick, they say, I don't know how to do that. You say, yes, you do. Go do it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you bring them out to a race. And that will convince Bringing them to oh, a race yeah. is a really good way. That's good. What are some of your challenges when making this? Challenges, definitely the limited time. So these yeah. race cars are very expensive to run, very yeah. expensive to move around, and the tracks are like tens of thousands of dollars just to have a day out here. Wow. So we need to be able to be very slick on our testing and on our debugging. We need to be able to have a quick turnaround to get the cars out, make sure we are very robust against our issues so we don't crash, and then when we bring it in, we need to be very quick on updating our code so yeah. we're ready for the next out. So the AI person, Greg, how do you design the AI? What were you thinking, like some of the thought processes? So essentially you collect data from the track and then you want to design the network to be able to provide all the outputs that you want mm -hmm. in a specific scenario. So on the perception side, you want to be able to see the road, mm -hmm. the walls, and then the other cars. And essentially, you tune the parameters of the model in order to be able to detect on the data that you've collected at these real tracks because I think it's very important to have real world data and verify it on that yeah. data rather than just relying on a simulation. When you guys first made it and tested, how did it feel? <laughs> so I, I can speak to that pretty well. I was one of the, I think one of the only people here that was around for the first season, yeah. which was the scariest. Nobody had ever done this before. These yeah. cars were basically prototypes. We're all just getting them together for the first time. And every little step is a major celebration. I was the perception lead back then. Yeah. And so it was my job to see where the other cars are on, on the track. And up to a certain point, we'd always been out by ourselves and that's somebody else's job at this point. And then the team lead comes to me and he says, Stephanie, tomorrow we need to make a pass. And that's my code stepping in all of a sudden. And I say, no, 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 it's not ready. We need to test. We need five more, another week. I need another <laughs> week, it's not ready. But you, you can't fight the track time. Whenever we have to do the pass, we have to do the pass. And we got out there that next day and I was watching our car go around the other car. I was coming up on it, coming up on it. And I'm just thinking of all the things that can go wrong. It's like, we're not going to see it. The path isn't <laughs> going to work. And then, you know what? We, we slide right past that car. We make our clothes. Everybody just cheers. We did it. Of course the code worked. You just got to <laughs> trust it, but it's terrifying. I want to ask about UX, like how the car looks. Like, how do you guys work on that? Uh, design. Design. We we have oh, another, yeah. so, <laughs> other people. We, we actually, we've gone through three different really exciting phases with our design. The first year, our design was given to us by an Auburn alum yeah. who lives in Indianapolis and designs professional designs for the Indianapolis Motor yeah, Speedway, really as well as universities player. across the country. Yeah. So this Auburn alum, Justin Patton, designed our livery the first year. It was like wow. a famous livery design. Wow. And then the second season, we were very hesitant to take our really good first season livery off so it had to be important as well. I reached out to the industrial and graphic design department in the university to try and see if we can get Auburn University involvement in this. Yeah. And we actually got a new professor who has a professional experience working with Disney for design. Yeah. And he designed our second year livery, which is what you can see on the car right now. That's awesome. Beautiful. Everyone takes pictures of it and says, this is the best.
best livery we've ever seen. <laughs> and all the time that he was working with us designing this second year livery, I said, Lee, we need to get your students involved with this because he's a teacher. He's teaching these graphic design yeah. students. So this year we finally did it. We had a class project where each of his students gave us, I think, 12 designs each in a class of 19, so hundreds of designs <laughs> from Auburn students. And we ended up picking another one for our, our new awesome. next year livery. Okay, I'm gonna go around the room. Say your name, and then what is one dream that you have related to this project? Oh, I'm Gregory Mifflin, AI team lead, and my dream is to start an autonomous sports car company. That's awesome. <laughs> my name is Elik Cosma, and my dream is to work for Starlink. Wow. I'm Jackson Blanks, mechanical lead. My dream is to work in IndyCar. I'm Jack Crowfoot mechanic and training and my dream is to own a motorsports team. I'm Alex Ranelli and my dream is to be a race engineer. Uh, I'm Caleb Schaefer and my dream is to keep working with autonomous vehicles. That's really cool. My name is Stephanie Meyer and I hope to keep pushing forward autonomous racing research and keep teaching bright young minds like the rest of my team here. Awesome, thank you.